Thank you for joining us once again. We now have Heiko who will be speaking about Noki. Uh, nice to see you. Um, well, so if you hear it, it means that you are interested about uh, learning the Noki project and uh, are interested in metric storage issues. So if you don't know me, uh, I'm Michael. So uh, nice Noki uh, logo that might look like a bug to you, but it's really nice. So. Uh, I'm a CentOS and federal developer, uh, CentOS more key working for CloudSeq, and if you know me from my federal days, you know that uh, this talk we have a lot of bad faith argumentation. And uh, on my day job, I'm uh, one of the RDO release brainer, so that's, that's what I'm doing uh, all day, release branding. So first of all, <coughs> this is not about pasta, <laughs> definitely not. So what is Noki? So if it's not a pasta dish, it's a service to store metrics as time series, originally developed within OpenStack, now it's an independent project. So Noki is supposed to be scalable, pluggable, simple to use, and I believe that you will trust me later that we will look at this. So uh, it's a fairly recent project. It started like three years ago, um, Within the OpenStack telemetry project, uh, it, it, is, it was used to be known as Silometer, if you're following OpenStack. And it was designed to be a standalone uh, project from the very beginning. And uh, they decided from the very beginning that uh, it will have a no doc, no merge policy, so thoroughly documented. And uh, well, despite this, it could have some holes in the documentation, but if you see one, please, please uh, either send a pull request or just open an issue. Uh, we will be uh, happy to fix it. So, if you're in uh, the monitoring uh, business or storing metrics, you will, you will ask me, hey, what about Graphite, InfluxDB, OpenTSDB, uh, whatever I don't, project I don't, I've even never heard about it. Well. As far as I know, most of these alternatives are often complex to deploy. And uh, that's the opinion of uh, the core team of Noki. Scalability promises are scarcely met. I cannot testify myself, but, well, I will trust them on that point. So, <coughs> Noki is trying to, to solve these issues. Make it simple to deploy and offer scalability. So what are the features that Noki provides? Well, obviously a REST API, you're not a real cloud product if you don't provide REST API nowadays. It has multi-tenancy from uh, the start. It provides efficient storage compression using NZ4 compression <coughs> algorithm. It uh, offers uh, various archive policies which you can define if the one that are provided by default uh, doesn't suit you. It has very various storage backends, file system, which is a default one, but I would recommend not using it outside of proof of concept because it has really terrible um, performances. Redis, if you need performances but not reliability. If you want reliability and good performances, Ceph is a recommended one. Or you can write your own. Metric segregation also is a feature. You can set your measure in batch. And um, did I mention scalability? Of, cor of course not. So I'd like to uh, start to discuss about how Noki works behind the scene. So we'll be disknocking Noki, which are creepy when you say you're speaking about pasta. So here's the data model. I hope you can read this. So, on your, on your um, left, we have the archive policy in blue. So, archive policy defines how we aggregate metrics and how long we store them. And on the right, we, in yellow, we have the metrics themselves. And uh, that's how we store the, the metric uh, the measures as time series. 
and they are associated to an archive policy which defines the lifetime of the metric. And these metrics are associated to a resource. And what is a resource? An instance of resource types, which are on the very far right in green. And well, they are basic, basically uh, the equivalent of classes in Python. And resources are the instance of these classes. So resource type just defines a, a list of attributes defining the resource from which we gather the metrics. So if you understand those concepts, uh, then um, you, can, you can pretty much dig in uh, looky uh, documentation and understand pretty much everything. So now, how uh, Gnocchi looks like in, 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 in real. So you have two main demons, the API1, which is an endpoint in red, and the metric D in green, which is uh, the one collecting the metrics and uh, organizing the store, store, storage. So you can have multiple instances of these services. Then you have the index which is stored in a database, uh, anything that is supported by SQL community supported. But uh, the preferred database of choice by the core team is Postgres, obviously. And uh, you can store the aggregate uh, in, the, in the storage in different uh, backends, so file system, Redis, Ceph, uh, whatever you like. Uh, surprisingly, no database uh, backend for storing measures. So, users go through the API and then, and then the API discuss with MetricD and, uh, well, through some optimization, uh, the API can write directly to measures, but uh, pretty conceptually, pretty much everything is going to MetricD. And you have, you may, if you have multiple metric D uh, demons, you have a coordinator, which can be a TCD or anything supported by the tools library, written by the same guys. So, uh, and you have a third daemon, which is not on this graphic, but it's called states D uh, to uh, retrieve measures at batch, if you want to interact with other services, but it's optional. Authentication, which is very important. So, there are three uh, authentication backends. The basic one, which is using uh, the HTTP authentication header without password, which sounds very secure to uh, in five folks every time uh, I say uh, <laughs> about it. Uh, the new remote user is pretty much the same thing, but it's using the HTTP uh, configuration. Um, and then, uh, if you want something more secure, you can use the OpenStack Keystone backend, which is uh, using LDP or um, any uh, database behind the scene to store credentials. And you have, obviously, passwords and stuff like that. Um, the, if, you, if you're not using OpenStack, if you, you may just uh, deploy a Keystone as a standalone service. That's, uh, already, that's supported. So you can, you, you can restrict access to uh, Gnocchi. All right, if you want to have proper credentials, you have to go through Keystone. Well, everyone wants to have pretty user user interface, and by default, uh, Gnocchi doesn't come with uh, interface, but you can use Graphema, which is a fancy web interface for anything about metrics. So uh, Graphema has already a Gnocchi plugin developed by the team, so you can install it free through Graphema, Cly, plugin installer, and, and uh, well. It has a funny and very long name, so I'm not saying it, but um, I, I'll share the slides afterwards if you want to look at it. And it works in both direct and proxy mode with Grafana. And you can configure dashboards to show your metrics and aggregate uh, very easily. And well, you've all heard that uh, Red Hat recently acquired ProOS. So we also acquired Prometheus. And uh, well, it's been a while, but we've been working in integrating Prometheus with uh, Gnocchi. So Gnocchi is, a is used as a storage backend for Gnocchi is used as a storage backend for Grafana and Prometheus. So you just have to deploy Gnocchi with the Prometheus flavor, and uh, Gnocchi will take care to uh, map the both um, data model, and uh, you just have to configure Prometheus to use. Uh, 
Pinky uh, Prometheus and um, API to um, store to store the data. So here's a sample of the um, of uh, the configuration file, and you can use it to uh, to integrate with Nios in Singa through the same Gnocchi Gnocchi's uh, utility or collect G. But that's pretty easy to do. So time to uh, use it or eat it. Um, oh, I'm hungry, so um, sorry for the title. So, uh, if you want to deploy Gnocchi very straightforwardly, well, you just need to have a Postgres server running somewhere. Pip install Gnocchi. Uh, the square brackets are to say, hey, deploy Gnocchi with uh, this flavor, so file and then Postgres. Uh, since I wanted to have a very, I wanted to have something uh, fitting the slides, I deployed it with the file back, backend. Don't do it, rather yourself. But it would have required uh, deploying self, which is another story. But well, you see, that means you're even better at, uh, than, my, uh, than I to deploy self. And then you just need to uh, edit uh, the Gnocchi configuration file. So. The uh, default configuration file is pretty much um, commented, so you just need to put your Postgres um, credential and you should be able to run it. Run the Nokia upgrade, Nokia upgrade uh, will set up the database for you, or upgrade uh, the database if you had a previous installation of Nokia. Start the Nokia API um, endpoint, the Nokia metric, and you're set. And you, you would need to install the um, Nuki client but to be able to interact with it with the key, but that's all. That's all. <coughs> and uh, if you are uh, using Ansible, well, my uh, dear friend Matthias in the room uh, wrote a Nuki role for this obsolete the Ansible. So uh, I tried to write a minimal uh, Ansible playbook to deploy Gnocchi using this role, so you would just need to clone uh, the, role, the, um, the following um, repository and uh, link it to the Gnocchi role and uh, set up a few variables and you're all set. The only task I had made was installing Gnocchi client, just uh, we'll be able to interact with it. And uh, obviously, it wouldn't be a real tech talk if, if I didn't say this word, Docker. <laughs> so, uh, if you want to play with Gnocchi and Docker, there is a small project called Gnocchi Docker that uh, provides few Docker files to deploy Gnocchi, a small uh, cluster uh, of um, Gnocchi cluster using Docker. So, it's pretty easy. Uh, you have a configuration file which you can set um, if you want to if you want to run a Gnocchi uh, stable releases and uh, download it from pip um, uh, store or either you if you feel less uh, using uh, the master and or your own uh, branch somewhere you can just you have a small uh, configuration file to to uh, configure and just uh, run the script to um, create to create a base image and just run, send a, send a, um, run a Docker Compose. You can even uh, start uh, Prometheus if you want to have Prometheus in your cluster and you're all set. That's very straightforward. So, how to use Noki? Well, i show you some comments and um, well, uh, probably uh, we'll stop to, uh, to show you uh, the answers, uh, the uh, response from the key because, well, um, it, everything has to sit on slides or otherwise it would be useless. So, just listening to the comments um, so you can, um, you can uh, play, start playing. So, you can use the archive policy. By default, Nokia will uh, in, in, in define a few policies for you that uh, you can create uh, once very easily. Like I'm creating, a, <coughs> like if I want to create a metric, I can associate it with uh, the policy now. 
And if you want to uh, add metrics, well, you can do measures. You just use the command major add and um, dash m, and uh, you enter measures. You can dash enter measures. So uh, let's say that uh, you have specific metrics. Uh, you are collecting using a custom name. You can just add this a command line uh, to make magic add the my metric, and uh, you can pretty much uh, integrate it uh, without uh, any specific problem. And then you can show metrics uh, using the unique identifier, or do aggregate like minimum 15, uh, 95 percent aggregate and stuff like that. So uh, one of the important uh, um, concepts in Nokia are resources. So before creating resources, you have to define the resource type. Or we'll define the resource type first. Because, well, as I said, resource type are the, cla uh, the equivalent in the class in object-oriented uh, programming. And the resources are instances of this class. So you, let's say that we um, define a, a, ser a, ser a server resource type. Well, it has two uh, attributes, a name, which is a string, and an host, which is also a string, because it's easier, it's easier because it can be either an IP or a uh, host name. And then, we want to create a server, um, so we use the common, common resource create, attribute, so we put, give it a name, www-42, which is uh, probably a web server. And uh, we give it uh, host, compute1, which should be an internal DNS name or host name. And then uh, we create that we create metric. Uh, metric, which is CPU, which, uh, well, probably it's a cloud instance, so it's medium. And then we create another metric, which is memory, though, so it's, it really looks like a cloud instance because we set it different in flavors. And then we define the type, which is server, and uh, we generate a UID using UID gem because you're providing UID. Nokia won't do it for you because, well, by, like all uh, software created by developer, we're lazy, so we put as much work as we can on the user. Sorry. And, um, well, you can also update resources. Let's say we want to change uh, the host name because, well, we want to do that. We just use the command resource update and change the attribute. You can change attribute, uh, um, you can change just one attribute. We're not uh, lazy assets like MongoDB, which require when you change one attribute. To, to reinsert the whole thing. So you can also review uh, the previous engine history using the common resource history. And uh, which is, the nice touch is that you can specify the format. It can be JSON, YAML, or whatever you want. You can even define plugins to define your format. And you can search resources. And, uh, well, another part. We all like numbers, so we will be speaking about performances. So, Gordon Chan, one of the core developers, which is not uh, uh, working in Twitter currently, made a nice blog post on Medium. So, you have the link uh, below. And uh, he decided to compare performances of uh, various versions of Nokia. And for the fourth, fourth uh, major releases, he decided to test um, with Ceph in green and with Redis in yellow. So you can um, compare uh, across the charts I'm showing you. So here, the higher, the better. So uh, as much, how many measures we, get, we can store per second. So um, blue is version two. That's version of version two, and uh, red is uh, version branch uh, three, which is still supported. So as you see, uh, we increase dramatically uh, performances uh, between uh, version two and four. 
the big uh, the big gap the big gap was um, between two and three. Uh, as you can see, Redis and Cell backend are slightly the same for recording measures. Now we can measure like uh, one to thirty-five uh, million um, measure per second. Uh, Redis is slightly, slightly faster, and but in practice, uh, this is the one recommended. Uh, fa fast uh, is an important criteria to you, rather than reliability. And uh, well. You have the spec of, um, of uh, the hardware used for um, for the um, in the bench, and you can see it's not uh, a toy uh, server we've been using. And for aggregates, well, here less is better. As you can see, version two was very very slow, and we've been able to improve performances. But um, between three and four, but that's pretty much equivalent. There's still an improvement, but still it's not very, uh, it's marginal, I'd say. And uh, here, Ceph is slightly better. And um, as you can see, um, Gnocchi, uh, one of the main improving uh, flow of Gnocchi, according to users, was performances. and. You can still read about uh, complaints, but the thing is, when you're deploying Gnocchi in production, really use set backend or Redis. Do not use Fire. It's, it's really here for proof of concept or developing purposes. It's not here for production. And it's really, really bad. So if, if you try to uh, do that, if you try to uh, use a right backend, you shouldn't have problems. Uh, you might have safe issues, but um, well, if you're managing a safe uh, cluster, it's mostly due to safe backend bugs. Nokia itself have uh, pre is pretty much perfect. It's pretty much doing its job here. So yeah, well. Since uh, in the in one of the previous uh, talks I saw that there was a Lego slide included one, it has no meaning, but I had to to have one. <laughs> so we jumping to conclusion. So dolce, desserts in Italian. So um, well, I've been my main job is working in OpenStack, and uh, Nuki has been part of OpenStack. We're still shipping it. And uh, I've been able to see uh, the progress in performances because uh, telemetry project, which is using Loki to solve backend, had many many issues, and I saw getting better over the time. And um, also, it's a it's a nice project because if you want to add on um, project, it's really sim the um, learning curve is very simple. Like uh, we had the sprints in PyCon France uh, a few months ago. And we have people who didn't know about the project who were able to submit patch uh, in one uh, or two days and uh, understanding the architecture. So it's really, really nice project. It's easy to deploy, simple to configure, which is always nice for infra folks. You don't want to have a project that are difficult to deploy. You have different way to deploy it through Docker, through Ansible. We also have puppet modules. Uh, that are maintained by OpenStack project, but it can be used standalone too. And they are very mature because they are testing production. And they have a really awesome doc. Uh, the contributors community is very friendly. Um, if you want to, if you are aware of vendor locking, well, uh, a part of uh, the core developers are paid by Red Hat, but not all of them. Like I mentioned, Gordon Chung, which was uh, one of the founder of the project, is working at another company. Uh, I don't remember. It's uh, some. Kind, I think it's a UIA, so it's completely different business. And there are. And if you wants to speak with real people, well, you can go through uh, the Loki channel on Freenode, and they are very quick to answer. It's quite uh, surprising, and they are very friendly. 
uh, nobody will, um, will be insult you or something, like you can see in some projects. So, um, well, they're very friendly, they read tickets, and um, if you browse through the history, you can see that even uh, users who are not, um, who have a difficulty with uh, in English uh, are treated very carefully, so they take time to understand the request and help them formulate it properly, and so that they are really trying to engage with the community. So that's why, despite I'm a small time contributor in this project, I'm trying to present it to you guys. So, in the end, uh, well, I have some demo afterwards, but uh, I wanted to thank the Gnocchi team because they helped me for the presentation and structure it. And they were very encouraging. And also, I'd like to thank the Italian cuisine for the tasting name because I was very angry uh, working on this project and making this presentation. <laughs> and um, so, uh, well, I'll show you uh, how Gnocchi is working. So, uh, here is Gnocchi Docker running. So, as you can see, it's, uh, I have a lot of uh, logs running and a lot of errors. But it's now in Google Docker. Huh? Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm switching to mirroring, so you can see my screen. Okay. So, here is it running, yeah. I have a lot of errors that happen only on this laptop, and I don't know why. <laughs> but it's still running. So, um, I'm just Whoa. stopping, yeah, I'm just stopping uh, the Gnocchi dog thing. And uh, start it again. So you see it, uh, it's, it is running uh, different images, one for Grafana, one for Gnocchi API, one for Gnocchi Metricity, the indexer, the storage. Mm -hmm. So you, it should produce at a small uh, scale a real cluster. And um, since uh, the only redeeming point of Dockerfile, despite the terrible format, is that it's very descriptive. So, if you want to, um, if you want to deploy by hand, or uh, write, uh, broke your own um, recipes to deploy in Nokia Cluster, you may want to look at it. Oh, yeah. So I'm rerunning it. So. Up, uh, and I'm making it bigger. So, so I have a series of uh, compo uh, Docker Compose um, uh, files. So the main one, you have one from Prometheus and one for fake host to uh, because they wanted uh, to uh, reproduce a separate storage host. But you can just use the main one if you want. And uh, if I do as you can see. So we have the configuration file I was speaking. So here we, I'm, de I'm fearless uh, deployed master. And uh, if you're even fearless, you can uh, hack a Gnocchi and just uh, point it to your uh, Git repository and deploy it. And uh, you can uh, even uh, try to mix uh, the different plugins if you want to try work on the GraphAdmin plugin or something. So you have to source this file. I'm not running it because it takes time, but uh, then you, you need uh, to build the base images to speed up uh, the Docker Compose. That's one of the first contributions I made to Gnocchi. So uh, it's basically uh, a simple script that uh, will, uh, will build the Docker files because you need to build the base images and then it will um, refresh uh, the other ones if you're working on the Gnocchi code, so you need to refresh the Gnocchi image. But uh, rather than taking uh, 30 to 40 minutes, it will take five minutes. Uh, not running it, but uh, you get the gist of it. And then you run the previous command I was showing you, Docker Compose. So it is recreating the images, and uh, as you see, it's going fast because nothing is changing. And it takes some time, then. Uh, then I can go back um, to. So here the Grafana um, interface, so it's, it uh, installed Grafana by default for you. 
So uh, the default passwords are very easy, and with password, very secure. So don't use it in production. So it creates a dashboard for you using Call D. So just showing you. So um, it gives you an example of uh, configuration. So well, no time because I just uh, run it, but it shows you seek usage, run usage, swap usage, and many stuff. But if you're familiar with Grafana, you know you can define your dashboard and check the metrics you're interested in. So it's uh, something that works pretty well. And uh, also, um, um, I also wanted to show you um, the um, API, which is uh, one in, um, Default endpoint, but um, if you're using a specific API, oh, so it should be server slash server statu uh, status slash server. Ah, <laughs> damn it! I, sh I shouldn't have tried to use to use Chrome just because Spot was here. So. Okay, uh, well. Uh, since I don't want to drag on, I will just show you instead uh, the vibrant image I started with uh, Docker. So, so I showed you earlier an Ansible playbook. Yeah, well, I'm already just uh, showing some demo. So uh, <coughs> the playbook I was showing it to you, uh, I used it uh, with Vagrant to uh, deploy a look instance uh, within a virtual image. So to validate that uh, it does work. So um, if uh, okay. oh, status. Oh. Mm. So as you see, uh, the the endpoint is. Uh, so um, it's very basic, the playbook, and um, the background file, where the background file is a bit uh, complex because I also use it to deploy um, OpenStack, but the relevant part is the, configure the provision block here, and I'm just running the playbook straightforward. So I can even, uh, yeah. Wrong, wrong to end with data. So it's very simple and uh, you can use it. Uh, you can use uh, <coughs> the GNOKI role from Opstools to deploy GNOKI. Uh, one I think uh, I'll try to fix is that uh, it uh, currently works with MyDB. Still have issues with Postgres. Uh, I have some hints on how to fix it. But uh, well, since I've been working on that uh, demo uh, yesterday, I haven't had time to finish because I was too busy to go to uh, peer events. But that's it. So if you have any question about Noki or well OpenStack, feel free to ask uh, here or uh, afterwards or during Fosdom. I would be uh, with some uh, teammates. Uh, at uh, the OpenStack booth, <coughs> and we're also hanging around the CentOS and the Federal booth, so just grab me. So, that's it. Any question? None? So, um, will, is anyone will be trying Nuki after? after? Nobody? Oh, come on. <laughs> Good. So uh, thank you for coming and uh, well, I leave you going to have a, for the break. Oh, there is a break now? There's one more session after. Okay.